Today I'd like to talk a bit about Boost Emblems. Boost Emblems are a Pokemon customization feature that was added to Unite in the 1.0 anniversary patch. They allow you to kind of tweak and tune your mods in a little bit more finer manner than things like held items do. Your individual emblems are assembled into groups of tens for loadouts. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing the top eight loadouts I've been using across all of my Pokemon in this current patch where we currently have 150 different Boost Emblems available to us. The individual emblems have two key parts to them. They have two different stats, one that they give a bonus to and one that they give a penalty to. And they also have one or two colors that provide group modifiers if you assemble a key amount of those colors in your loadouts. The key thing to note about the color modifiers is that getting the final bonus, the third bonus, is double the second bonus, which is double the first bonus. This means, for example, if you have four brown emblems, you get a 2% attack increase, but if you have six brown emblems, you get a 4% attack increase. This means anytime your loadouts can get to that final step on as many of these color combinations as possible, you're getting a lot of extra stats out of them compared to having, you know, just two, four, or three, and five modifiers in a variety of different ones. Let's go ahead and dive on into the emblem loadouts that I've been enjoying and talk about which types of characters they are good on and why. Our first boost emblem loadout here is called attack plus defense because those are the two stat modifiers we're fully maxing out on in the color groups. Six brown gives us a 4% attack increase while six blue gives us an 8% defense increase. We also incidentally get four white which gives us 2% additional health as well as two purple which gives us 2% additional special defense. This loadout I found is really good on melee brawler attackers such as Zarina or Aegislash or Lucario or Machamp, characters that want to scale up that attack stat will also want to have a little bit of durability inside of combat. Let's talk through how this emblem loadout ended up where it was. To start with, when I begin building emblem loadouts, I always look at what double colors we have available to us, and attacks are really nice color set to key off of because you'll note here that all six of our orange emblems also happen to give us a second color as well. We incidentally have three blue in with these orange, which makes that the most straightforward second color to get up to the maximum on. So we're able to supplement those three blue with three more to max out that stat. When we're loading up these other blues, blue also has white splits here, which in combination with the orange white split means our 10th emblem can be a dedicated white one to get us up to four white modifiers. And then obviously Nido King and Nido Queen here also just instantly are purple to give us special defense. You note that the flat stats here are largely dump statting special attacks. So you definitely don't want to put this on characters that key off of that stat. And that's something that's really nice about these physical emblem loadouts of if you you can get as many negatives into special attack as possible. It's basically all upside with the smaller amount of flat stats that we have here. This next loadout is called Attack Critical Hit, so those are the two main stats that it's focusing on improving. I really like this loadout on characters that are auto-attacking a lot, Decidueye, Greninja, Cinderace, Charizard, etc. We max out the brown modifier to get that 4% additional attack, and then we gain over 4% additional crit hit rate in the stat modifiers directly on the emblems themselves. The white and the blue are again just kind of group modifiers that we incidentally had some copies of, so if we play an Aerodactyl and a Polyrath here. We're able to kind of round out those bonuses, just get extra stats out of this emblem loadout that's already close to having them. Up next, we have a cooldown reduction build for physical attack focused Pokemon. The black emblems here at seven give you 4% cooldown reduction, letting your attacks come up a bit quicker. I really like this loadout on characters that are trying to leverage Razor Claw, specifically Dragonite and Shadow Claw Aegislash come to mind as characters that wanna press their buttons more frequently and really benefit from having the reduction on here. Past the seven black, we're just again, incidentally picking up what we can get where. Black Black doesn't have a ton of great things for physical attackers, incidentally, but we do get a blue with Tentacruel and a purple with Gengar that we're then able to combine with some other double colors to round out a few different modifiers here. Up next, we have a cooldown reduction build focused on special attackers, characters such as Mew, Glaceon, 
Espeon, and Delphox, for example, really love this loadout. In addition to the seven black giving us 4% cooldown reduction, thanks to the plentiful amounts of green black emblems in the game, we're also able to get six green into this loadout for 4% additional special attack. We're also able to snag a little bit of extra health as well as special defense here. And most notable in this em emblem loadout is that Mewtwo here actually provides an additional 0.5% flat cooldown reduction on its base effects as well for a total of 4.5% CDR on this loadout here. Up next, we have my loadout for thicker special attackers, Pokemon such as Mr. Mime, Blastoise, and Slowbro really love this configuration. We've maxed out the special attack bonus at six, giving us 4% additional special attack. We've also maxed out our health at six to give us 4% additional health. And then we get a touch of black cooldown reduction with these as well as two blue to round out our modifiers in other places. Looking at the individual stat modifiers on these emblems is notable as well in this configuration because you'll note that we get a good bit of extra health from them with minimal amounts of penalties in a bunch of other locations, making this ideal for anybody that wants to have a lot of survivability while still caring about their special attack stat. This next loadout is one I've been using on all of my physical tanks in Pokemon Unite. Mamoswine, Snorlax, anybody thick that doesn't care about their special attack gets this one. Not only do we get six white for 4% health, but we also have six blue for 8% defense, and we mix in four orange as well for 2% base regular attack. Looking to the modifiers on the individual emblems yet again here, you'll note that we have a good amount of extra HP, but more importantly, the only stat that we're really dumping here is special special attack, which characters this emblem loadout is going on to won't care about that as a stat, so it's basically all upside here in these base effects. Up next, we have a loadout that really cares about the individual modifiers on the emblems themselves, and that's this zoom zoom build. Most notably, all of the emblems here other than Nidoqueen give us bonus movement speed. 287 in this specific loadout's instance is about a 7-8% to 8 movement speed increase depending on which Pokemon you're putting it on. This loadout is great if you're looking to head on over to the opposing central area and get in there ASAP. Getting there nearly 10% quicker is the matter between getting a last hit or not in a lot of situations. Nidoqueen is here, even though she doesn't give movement speed, to round out a couple of bonuses since she gives both brown and purple. The rest of these color modifiers are kind of just what we get from emblems that give us movement speed increases. Finally, we have what's probably the most narrow of the boost emblem loadouts that we have here today. This is a loadout I've been using specifically on Aura Veil Ninetales, who's one of the few characters in the game that actually gains a benefit from the attack speed increases that Seven Red provides. If you're not sure what I mean by that, attack speed in Pokemon Unite is wonky to say the least. And I'm going to link a video in the description down below fully explaining attack speed, but if you're playing a character that wants its attack speed increase and really benefits from that, this is my loadout for special attackers that prefer that, and Aurora Veil Ninetales is definitely good at leveraging that extra attack speed that these red emblems are capable of providing. Something to keep in mind when you're building your own boost emblem loadouts of your own is that everybody's got slightly different ones the way they come out of this gotcha style machine, which is why I tried to explain the thought process that I had when I was building these loadouts. That way you can adapt and tweak them for your own at home. Even my own emblem loadouts aren't 100% efficient. For example, the movement speed and critical hit loadouts in specific are ones that are missing some gold emblems that could get my critical hit and flat movement speed bonuses a little bit higher up. Um, are there any boost emblem loadouts that you've been playing with that you think have been having good effects for you that I don't have covered here that you think I should check out? If so, let me know in the comments down below. Also noteworthy that this definitely won't be the last time we get boost emblems added to the game. Most notably, the navy boost emblems on Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite are the only three navies in the game, but the modifiers for navy go all the way up to seven, like black and red, so we're obviously going to get four more of those at some point. We also don't have the ability to get maximum pink on an emblem loadout yet as well, so there's got to be more of these things coming. I'm looking forward to trying and updating more builds once we get those in the game eventually and I get them open. Hmm. Second part might be harder though. At any rate, thanks for watching the video all the way through the end. Remember to tap that like button if you haven't already, and be sure to check back in again tomorrow for some more great Pokemon Unite content here on YouTube.